What's up peeps and poops and welcome back. So today we're actually going to be going over cannabinoid metabolites and we're going to spend just a bit on this. Strap on in because we're going to hit it to quit it. Are you somebody who never feels their edibles? Well, here's why. Cannabis contains over 421 individual ingredients spread across 18 different classes of chemicals. The majority of these compounds necessitate some form of metabolism for elimination from the body. Let's commence with phase one metabolism, the initial leg of today's journey. This phase engages a series of specialized enzymes known as the cytochrome P450 monooxidase system, or CYP450, found universally and pivotal in drug metabolism. In humans, CYP enzymes orchestrate about 75% of total metabolism. They not only metabolize cannabinoids, but also hormones known as glucocorticoids, estrogens, and testosterone. For cannabinoids, phase one metabolism yields both active and inactive metabolites. Notably, 11-hydroxytetrahydrocannabinol emerges as an active metabolite of THC. 11 nor 9 carboxy delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, which is often referred to as 11 nor 9 carboxy THC, or as THC 11 OIC acid, which is the main secondary metabolite of tetrahydrocannabinol, which is formed in the body after cannabis is consumed. Now, let's advance to phase 2 metabolism, also known as conjugation, where an additional functional group joins the metabolite sculpted in phase 1. Glucuronic acid emerges as a primary conjugation species employed in the cannabinoid metabolism. The intent behind phase 2 metabolism is to deactivate compounds and enhance water solubility, thereby easing their elimination through the kidneys or feces. Now let's embark on an in-depth exploration of how specific cannabinoids are metabolized. CBD or cannabidiol undertakes phase 1 metabolism involving enzymes like CYP3A4, CYP2C19, and CYP2D6. The principal metabolite 7-hydroxy-CBD is deemed just as potent as CBD itself. The CYP450 enzymes in the liver play a crucial role in metabolizing THC, which is a psychoactive component in cannabis. Specifically, the enzyme CYP2C9 converts THC into 11-hydroxy-THC, which is actually more potent and crosses the blood-brain barrier more easily. When there's a higher concentration of these enzymes, the conversion happens more quickly, potentially leading to a more intense or longer-lasting high. So if your liver is especially efficient at producing these enzymes, you might find that cannabis affects you more strongly. On the flip side, if there are fewer enzymes, the THC may not get converted as quickly, which would result in a milder experience. It's a bit like having a super efficient factory line, where the quicker the assembly, the faster the end product gets churned out, in this case, 11-hydroxy-THC. Keep in mind this is a simplified explanation and that individual experiences with THC can vary due to numerous other factors like tolerance, dosage, and method of consumption. Yo, like, subscribe, ring the bell, buy me coffee, join my Patreon. Also, if you want to support me, you can head on over to my TikTok, I got a link, and you can actually buy my series. I have about three seasons on there right now. It's $8 per season, about eight episodes per season, so you're looking at about a dollar an episode. But yeah, if you want to support me, go check it out. All right, love you guys, back to cannabis. Delta-8 THC is metabolized in the liver, much like its common counterpart, Delta-9 THC. The primary metabolite for Delta-8 THC is 11-hydroxy-Delta-8 THC. This metabolite is then further broken down into secondary metabolites that are eventually excreted from the body. Just like 11-hydroxy-Delta-9 THC is more potent than Delta-9 THC, 11-hydroxy-Delta-8 THC is generally considered to be more potent than Delta-8 THC. However, research on Delta-8 THC and its metabolites is much more limited compared to Delta-9 THC, so further studies are needed to understand and its full range of effects and metabolic pathways. Phase 2 metabolism metamorphoses 7-carboxycannabidiol into glucurinoid conjugates, ultimately excreted via urine and feces. THC initiates its journey with hydroxylation and oxidation through enzymes like CYP2C9, 
CYP2C19, and CYP3A4 during phase 1 metabolism. Two primary metabolites of THC, 11 hydroxy tetrahydrocannabinol and 11 or 9 carboxy tetrahydrocannabinol emerge. 11 hydroxy THC is active, while 11 or 9 carboxy tetrahydrocannabinol assumes an inactive state. Phase 2 transforms these metabolites into 8A hydroxy tetrahydrocannabinol, 11 or 9 carboxy tetrahydrocannabinol glucuronide, and other glucuronide conjugates. THCO, a prodrug for THC, follows analogous metabolic pathways but includes an additional activation step. This elongated process results in a slower onset, with effects lasting up to 25% longer than conventional THC. Although other ester-5 versions of THC such as THCO phosphate, THC hemisuconate, and THC morpholinobutrate exist, none have garnered as much attention as THCO. Numerous factors influence cannabinoid metabolism, including age, contaminant medications, genetic variations, and underlying medical conditions. Cannabinoids including CBD can engage in interactions with other medications by vying for the same metabolic pathways. This can either decelerate metabolism, heighten the risk of side effects, or diminish the efficacy of specific drugs. In certain scenarios, the potential for interactions can be substantial, especially concerning drugs with narrow therapeutic windows. Warfarin, a prevalent blood thinner, exemplifies the situation where precise titration is imperative. So in summation, grasping the intricacies of cannabinoid metabolism is paramount for determining effective dosages and identifying potential interactions with other pharmaceuticals. The voyage of these compounds through phase 1 and phase 2 metabolism is not scientifically riveting, but also reveals intricate interplay within the human body. So I hope this helps you guys understand cannabinoid metabolites just a little bit better. If you have any questions at all, hit me up down in the comments. Any hate mail, down in the comments. If you want to send me links to cute shit, down in the comments. And until next time, I love you guys. Deuces.